Welcome to the final part of repairing and rebuilding a very large horizontal model steam engine. This is part 8 and shows the valve setting and the testing. Here I'm setting the valve position. The slide valve has to pass over the ports equally at both ends. The timing of the valve is down to the eccentric setting. What I need to aim for with this engine, as with all steam engines, is early admission. I need the valve to just crack as you can see here, letting steam or compressed air into the cylinder, just before the piston reaches top dead centre at each end of the cylinder. This early admission effectively cushions the piston and stops all the mechanical parts from overstressing at the end of their limits. If the valve is in the correct position over the ports, all you need to do is set the position of the eccentric relative to the crank pin. And I mean just before top dead centre, not like this, more like this. This would be about fine for the valve just to uncover the steam port to let the steam into the cylinder. It would be effectively cushioning the piston at each end of the stroke. And because the valve is equidistant, when you turn the crankshaft over, you will also see that the valve uncovers the other port when the piston is at the other end of the cylinder. So now with the valve set and the steam chest cover back on, I'll give it a run. This is very much the first run. Things are a little bit tight, but it's running very well. This flywheel, although it's not very well machined, is really heavy. And that's very good because the kinetic energy is there to pull the parts over top dead center. One of the main problems with slide valves, they're quite efficient, as far as steam engine valves go, and they tend to wear in, not wear out, because they're always pressed against the port face by the pressure of the steam, but they don't have to take a lot of moving. The pressure of the air or steam holding the valve against the port means that it requires quite a lot of force to move the valve. There are many other valve gear designs for steam engines. Locomotives generally use piston valves, although some of the earlier locomotives use slide valves. The slide valve is good for model use though because it's a fit and forget thing. They seldom give any trouble, provided of course they're lubricated, but that goes without saying. The machining on this flywheel is not good and it was also very rusty. I took the bulk of the rust off with an orbital sander and here I'm finishing it off. I'm running the engine and using some very coarse sandpaper to clean the edge of the flywheel. If you do things like this, keep your hand well clear of any moving parts other than the rim of the flywheel. This is a useful thing to do. A, it puts a load on the steam engine which is always a good thing and if you want to sit for many hours you could get a really good finish on this flywheel. Change the position of the sandpaper frequently though because it does clog up. Run the steam engine at a steady speed, you don't want it to vibrate off the bench. And after a while you'll find that you get quite a good finish on the outer rim of the flywheel. So bite into the flywheel initially with a coarse piece of sandpaper and then change it for a finer grade. This is 600 grade wet or dry followed by a piece of scotch bright to get a good finish. I might do a bit more to this flywheel. I'll finish the video first. That's it for now. The engine runs very well really. Quite surprised, because it was such a dog when I first started working on it. It's been quite a difficult job to do this really. Remaking the crankshaft took some time. But it's worth it now because it runs quite well. It's very sweet and very smooth. And it will get better as it beds in. I'll just leave the video running for a while and show you various angles of the engine running. Time now to fit the governor. The steam or air inlet tap you see is only a temporary fitment. I'm going to put a proper tap on there. Maybe I'll link the governor up because at the moment it's not really doing anything. Here it is, in position. Being driven from the crankshaft pulley. And it works very well. And it's in the right position if I want to put a linkage on it and make it move a valve.
I always enjoy resurrecting very bad condition old engines and this is no exception, it's great to see it running so well. A far cry from what it was like when I first got it, please refer to episode 1. That's about it, I'll just leave the video running for a while showing the engine running. And all I've got to say now is thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.